Hey, how's it going everybody? Good morning. So I got two dozen shafts here that I got stain on last night and the first coat of clear coat. So this morning I'm going to be putting the cap paint um, on these shafts and get them dipped uh, one more time and then we'll start doing some cresting. So um, for these shafts, I think for at least one of the dozens, I'm going to be using um, some of this 3M washi tape. Uh, for people that don't have an arrow crester yet and they want to make their own arrows, this is a really good option that I found anyway uh, that kind of gives you that cresting look uh, without actually having to buy a crester. So. All right, so once I put my first uh, coat of a clear coat sealer on these, all the grain um, will raise up. Um, and so what I do after my first coat, actually after every coat, is I'll just knock those uh, raised fibers down with a uh, green scotch Sprite pad. And that gives me a nice smooth surface to either crest or in this case, I'll end up uh, painting on my cap paint, which I'll do next year. So I'll get all these sanded down um, and then we'll move on to the next step. Right, so we're outside now I got um, the cap that I'm gonna paint I got it all taped off here uh, made a few marks on each of the arrows just supposed to picture that uh, so the next step now is I'm gonna paint these I'm gonna do two coats of paint so the first coat uh, will be a pretty light color or excuse me a light coat um, just so that I don't get any runs or any bleeding of the paint so we'll get one coat of paint on here we'll let them dry luckily spray paint um, which I use for all of my cap paints uh, spray paint dries pretty quick so here in 15 20 minutes uh, 30 minutes we'll be able to come back and put another coat on uh, as long as it doesn't rain. So what we're looking to do here is just a couple light coats of paint. That's it. I'm not looking for 100% coverage, just looking to get a nice coat started there. So we'll let these dry and we'll come back. Nice clean lines. tape off uh, both of this dozen but I'm showing you guys this one um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put one more coat of finish on it before we do any cresting so I usually cut my finish with a little water um, makes it go a little farther and um, makes, makes it a little smoother done I'll do a, just a light sand these are pretty smooth now uh, but I'll do a light sand and we'll get cresting so I'm not squeezing very hard it's really light just trying to knock off any high spots these are feeling really nice nice and smooth All right, so like I was saying earlier, uh, for this set of arrows, we are gonna be using washi tape instead of uh, actually painting on, hand painting, or hand cresting these arrows. 
Um, so these arrows, I uh, we went through. I got my cap paint on there. They're stained. I've got two coats of seal on them so far. So this washi tape is just tape. Um, there's a couple tricks to putting it on so that it looks the best, um, but it kind of gives it that cresting pattern. So we're going to do two strips of it on each shaft. So we're going to do a, a piece at the transition here and a piece at the stain transition here as well. Um, the biggest key in doing this is tapering the uh, tape. So you don't want to cut it off square. You actually want to cut it off at an angle and that will kind of make the transition of the tape seem uh, seamless. So um, we'll, we'll get the, the washi tape on the shafts. So I'll kind of do a little zoom in shot for you folks uh, so you can see how I do it. But um, And a couple little tricks along the way. And I'll show you those as well. Um, so we'll get the washi tape on them all. We'll go through all the whole dozen and then we'll dip them two more times and then we'll be ready to fletch. All right, so we're gonna start with this washi tape here. Um, you can see the, I've already got an angle started on this tape. Um, so because I started all this paint uh, on a pencil line, I know that they're all consistent. So as long as I start all these washi tapes in the same spot on each shaft, I should have a consistent product. So I'm gonna overlap the first black line uh, with the shaft here. And I just kind of pull tight. Give myself about a wrap and a half so that it's a consistent product. And you can see there's the end of my wrap. So I've got about a quarter of a wrap extra. And I'm gonna keep wrapping that around until I have a tail. And then I'll take my Duco cement. I'll put a little dab of Duco. And then as I twist this, that duco will kind of spread out. And what that does is it, obviously it's gluing that tab down. Um, but when I dip this shaft, um, I learned this because as I was dipping the shafts originally before I did that, um, the wetness would unstick the glue uh, of the sticker itself and then I'd end up with loose wraps. So we've got uh, two more coats of finish on these over the washi tape. Uh, so the next step in the process is to put our knocks on so we can start fletching. So um, because we hung these um, knock taper down, uh, the finish just kind of created a little bump at the, the knock end here. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and trim off that little glob of finish on each shaft. And that'll let our knock sit down nice. I'm using boning knocks. I like boning knocks, classics. Uh, pretty simple process. All we gotta do, my Duco cement here. I'm just putting a little ring of Duco in there. So as I put it in on the shaft, I'm pushing and twisting. And I'm taking note of the orientation of the grain. So we want the knock, uh, the string essentially, to run perpendicular um, to the grain lines. So um, you can usually see the little chevrons uh, of a shaft. Sometimes, sometimes sure with shafts, their tolerances are so perfect that there aren't any chevrons, but um, there's just ever so slight chevron. And a chevron is just where the grain is running out. We got this one lined up. I just take my finger, give it a little twist, any of the extra squeeze out. Usually wipe it on my pants or a, a napkin or something. But, um, so there we go, there's a knock on a shaft. See all my grain lines um, running this way. Here's the other sides of them here. Um, and on the end or the top of the shaft, see there's just one spot where the grain has ran out. So this shaft 
It's a really nice shaft. And again, on this side, it doesn't run out at all. So, but if you look for the grain lines, grains running this way, so that I want my string to run perpendicular to that. So that's why I got my knock set now. black and white on these shafts should look really really nice when we're done um, I have all my clamps numbered one through six so I'm gonna start with number six I have went ahead and uh, pre-cut all my fletchings all my feathers um, to five inches long I'm gonna be doing five inch shield cuts so I have a pencil mark on each of my clamps as a reference point um, just so that everything ends up at the same um, height. I just take my Duco cement here and I just put a little bead of glue down the feather. It works really good. I run my finger along the side of the clamp as a guide. Again, clamp number five. Again, line in the back of the quill up with my pencil mark. Be glue. Making sure the whole quill is laying down on the shaft. Looks great. feathers fletchings on each of these uh, so I'll do a half a dozen of my shafts at a time so we'll let these dry we'll come back and I'll speed the rest of this up for you so you can see how I do it All right, so we've got all of our arrows fletched here. Uh, I've got the young feather trimmer warming up. Uh, we're gonna get to burning. I know this is everybody's favorite part. Everybody seems to comment a lot, uh, saying they like watching feathers burn. So that'll be the next step in the process. These are arrows are almost done. They're looking awesome. So keep watching. So we got those burnt, now just time to clean them up. I've already kind of done a video on cleaning up these shafts. I'm gonna go ahead and get these all done. I'll show you guys the final product. All right, so once I got these uh, arrows cleaned up um, and the smoke stains removed, um, this is my last little piece of the pie. This is my last little piece here. Um, I give all the feathers a little taper with my X-Acto knife here. Make for a nice transition. And I'll end up putting a dab of glue on those. So we'll go through all of them here. arrows are done this was a really fun project uh, the intent was to show everybody that you can make cool arrows without an arrow crester um, you can also you know buy pre-chopped feathers to whatever shape of feather that you want 
uh, without using a, a feather burner like I was using in my video. But uh, let's take a look at these arrows. They turned out nice. That washi tape adds a nice touch. Feather burner did pretty good. White is always really, really hard with a feather burner. You end up with a little bit of smoke stain, but uh, it ends up wearing off. But it was a great, great project. I enjoyed doing it. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. I know a lot of folks have been sending me messages asking questions this whole time, but um, keep them coming. I love answering questions, helping people out wherever I can. And if you guys have made it this far in the video and you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and uh, you'll be sure to be notified next time I have a video. See you next time.